All right, we all know baseball is a sport that brings together families, friends, and teammates alike. But America's pastime can also help forge bonds among strangers. That's what happened more than 60 years ago when a chance encounter and an act of kindness by a major leaguer changed the course of a young fan's entire life. Chris Van Cleef has this story. Opening day, 1962. The then minor league San Diego Padres were about to run away with the Pacific Coast League. But as good as the team was, and they were good, they won 93 games, it was a few hours off the field that changed the life of a 10-year-old baseball fan. I had one skill as a Little League pitcher, and that was dusting off hard Little League batters. The safest place for them to be when I was pitching was in the dugout. Merle Ledford was that 10-year-old. His coach got him a few practice sessions with Padres pitcher Zach Monroe. He worked with me to help control that wild pitching, but uh, uh, more than that, you know, it just taught me a lot about uh, how to get along uh, that last my whole life. Taught you how to deal with a cur life's curveballs, it sounds like. Mostly, it was focus on the oh. catcher's mitt. You know, a 10-year-old boy doesn't stay focused very well very long, but he taught me to stay focused. Sometimes you're not going to throw strikes. Shake it off. You've got a job to do. Do your job and do it the best of your ability. Something like the baseball's not going to pitch itself. <laughs> 61 years later, a now successful lawyer nearing retirement, Ledford told his wife about Monroe over dinner and the lessons he believes helped him become a better student than a better lawyer, baseball coach, and father. She said, well, I wonder if he's still around. And so she punches up his Wikipedia entry. You ought to tell him just how grateful you are for him working with you when you were a kid. He tried to find him without much luck, so he wrote to Major League Baseball for help delivering this message. Dear Mr. Monroe, Caption, thank you. The skills you taught contributed to making the world a better place off the field as well. Major League Baseball hadn't been in touch with Zach Monroe in decades, but they knew he was from Peoria, Illinois, so they called the Chiefs, the minor league baseball team here. They didn't know Zach, but the GM did know another Monroe, Zach's brother. Which set up an unlikely <laughs> reunion. Good to see you, fella. Good to see you, Zach. Between the Little League wild man and the pro ball player, Ledford traveled 2,000 miles from Visalia, California to central Illinois for the chance to meet Monroe, now 92, once again catching up over lunch. What did today mean to you? Oh, this is huge. This is wonderful. Just being able to thank a guy that helped me out when I was little and share with him, hey, look, you did something good. Monroe was a career minor leaguer who got a taste of the big leagues notching four wins for the New York Yankees in 1958 when the Bronx Bombers won the World Series. He even pitched the eighth inning of game two. Do you remember what went through your mind as you took the ball? Just scared <laughs> You know, because, you know, this is a big deal. You got to go out and do your job, hope you do it good enough. So you just focus on that catcher's mitt. When I was going to the game, my legs felt like logs. <laughs> Really and truly, and it's hard to believe my first year won a World Series. It's like a dream. Ten-year-old you getting time from somebody who has won a World Series. What is that like? Uh, it, my eyes were about that big. 1962 would prove to be Monroe's final year in pro baseball. One of the last things you did in baseball was inspire this ten-year-old in a way that has stayed with him his entire life. That's pretty amazing. Whatever I said stuck with him. Somebody went a lot further than I did. And I'm talking about an attorney. <laughs> I mean, you went pretty yeah, far. Yeah. You did win the World Series. <laughs> he was a pretty good individual, too. For two people bonded by baseball, it's only fitting this reunion bring them back to the diamond. Instead of the Padres, this time it's the Peoria Chiefs. Watching batting practice from the field, in a way, was like turning back the clock six decades. It's interesting that in learning some things about baseball, he learned some lessons about life. Very good, very good. Just being a good guy to start with. 
let people tell you things. Isn't it a strange, strange world how things have a way to go? You got to keep your confidence up. No matter what you're doing, keep staying with it. It'll work for you. There was action on the field that night, the Chiefs taking on the Beloit Skycarp. But much like that 1962 season, for Ledford, it wasn't so much about who won or who lost. It was finally getting to deliver this message in person. Your unselfish attention to an unpromising 10-year-old made a real difference. You, sir, made the world a better place. Well, thank you. And that simple gratitude is a win in the game of life. For CBS Saturday Morning, I'm Chris Van Cleve in Peoria, Illinois. Incredible. Really beautiful. First of all, Zach Monroe for 92 years old looks, <laughs> looks amazing. incredible. Yeah. And second of all, yeah. never underestimate the impact you can have, even yes. for just a few moments, on a young life and what they remember. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's extraordinary. It goosebumps. Yeah, the life lessons of sports and to have gratitude for everything you do and have along the way seems to be the, the key for both of them. Incredibly powerful. And the fact that he was able to go back to him and say that yeah. so many decades later. Great story, great, Chris. Great piece. Really great.